most of you aren't subscribed. Make sure to conquer the subscribe button, as it helps out the channel. Without further ado, following the master of the manor, we see him teasing his two captured elven slaves, beginning to perform devious acts on them. Making his way towards the mansion, Ark carries Ariane like a princess, asking for directions, only to be pointed towards the highest place of the manor. Having quietly made it onto the top of the manor, the two are unfortunately spotted, asked to come quietly. Having other ideas, Ark slashes a nearby bell, using it as cover, as the two head deeper into the mansion. Comedically standing as a statue, Ark is able to hide from the guards roaming the manor, swiftly heading to the master chambers to rescue the two elves. Following the master triton, he's distracted from his devious foreplay with the elven girls, when his butler runs to alert him of intruders. Before Triton can learn about the intruders, his door is smashed, as Ariane and Ark make their entrance. Refusing to allow intruders into his domain, Triton attempts to kick them out, but Ariane plants her leg into the man's crotch, putting him out for good. Knowing what might come if he tries to fight, Triton's son attempts to flee, but Ark cuts him off, scaring him to sleep. Having used too much strength, Ark realizes that one of the walls was fake, concealing something behind it. Checking up on Ariane, we see her continue to punish the disgusting Triton, reasoning that since he had broken a treaty and captured some elves, he deserves all the punishment he can get. Giving the two elves a chance to rough up Triton, Ponta and Ark can't help, but stand and watch. Suddenly Triton's knights arrive, rushing in to rescue their master. Leaving the men to Ariane, Ariane infuses her blade with flames, easily gliding past the men, as they each fall. Turning to the girls, Ariane orders them to get to safety, and find Donka. Back with Ark, we see him greedily stuff bars of gold into his bag, as Ponta watches on. Suddenly Ariane interrupts, forcing Ark to come up with an idea. Ark racks Ariane's brain asking her what would be the best thing to do with the gold in this room. Adding on Ark states that depriving evildoers of funds to do their evil bidding would be the best, and this is enough to trick Ariane to allow Ark to take all the gold. Suddenly the two hear explosions all throughout the manor, forcing the two to teleport to safety. Thinking back, Ark deduces that the explosions must be the work of the ninja, but can't be sure, as he confirms that he's completed his mission asked off by Ariane. Receiving his payment for helping her, Ariane wonders what Ark will do now, asking if Ark would like to visit her village, and continue to help her free other captured slaves. Internally, Ark can't be any happier, but calms himself as he knows he's still an outsider. Learning that he must meet with the leader of the elves, Ark seems hesitant, making Ariane believe that Ark does not trust her. But Ark reveals that he is unable to remove his armor, afraid of what others may do if they were to see his true form. Standing firm, Ariane promises to always trust Ark which makes Ark finally show his face to Ariane. Shocked at first, Ariane wonders the reason for such a look, which Ark fabricates a backstory, explaining that he was brought to this world having no memory, and cursed with this skeleton body. Reasoning that undead aren't able to use light magic light Ark, and that Ponta wouldn't be attracted to evil beings, Ariane believes that Ark is a trustworthy person, no matter his looks. Seeing Ariane accept his true form, Ark agrees to accompany her, to meet with the elders, and to be permanently tasked with saving other captured elves. Following the king of the Rowan kingdom, we see him speaking to his two sons, the oldest sect and the youngest Dakares, and the princess, Uriarna. Wondering about the sudden increase in tension between humans and elves, the eldest son speaks up, accusing Triton of capturing elves, but the second son defends Triton, forcing the king to step in before things get heated. Knowing that their relations with the elves is crucial, as they have superior magic and help with a lot of agriculture and resources, the king has his sons and daughter begin to investigate the cause of the increased tension. Back with Ark, we see him following close behind Ariane, wondering why there is no sign of a clearing, in the forest they're in. Seeing a sudden opening, Ark makes use of his teleportation, only to fall off a ledge, having not anticipated it. Taking a break, the two set up a fire, as Ariane learns that Donka and the girls are safe, and are heading towards Lalatoya, the elven village. Their conversation is cut short, as Ariane grows hungry, which Ark heads out to search for more food. Seeing Ponta sleep so elegantly, Ariane begins adoring Ponta's adorable looks, 
forced to hold back and not wake her up. Having brought back a boar to eat, Ark accidentally stumbles onto Ariane, cuddling and complimenting Ponta, only to be embarrassed, putting Ponta down. Cutting to the princess, we see her chatting with her maid, talking about how she knows her brother Dakares is involved with the elf captures, but she also knows that sect will try to leverage Dakares' evil doings, to gain something. Speaking up, the maid grows excited, knowing that if Dakares is gone, the princess will only have to compete with sect for the throne, but Uriarna shuts her down, as she still isn't sure that Dakares will be punished. Changing topics, the princess reasons that their top priority at the moment, is to communicate and clear up any issue with the elves, stopping anything else from escalating further. The conversation ends, as Uriarna mentions her oldest sister, marrying into a mysterious family. Back with Ark, he's finally arrived, shocked at the massive infrastructure of the village. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like and comment.